And Tony had asked um, about what are the pros and cons of a deep in the money covered call versus a standard caller. And we had a similar conversation on this. Um, let me go back to YouTube real quick. And let me just look up callers real quick. No, let me search on my channel. I was going to do that first. D-O-L-L-A-R. So let's take a look here. What I'm looking for. It was, yeah, I think it was, no, it was the one just from a month ago, I believe. Covered calls versus callers. You can find it better in the other one. Um, So this one's a good, I'm sorry, this one's a good one, though. Let me try covered call versus caller. Anyway, the, the pros and cons of a covered call, in the money covered call versus a caller, of course, is that both offer that, let's just go back here, both offer a reasonable percent return. Okay, so for a covered call there, let's go to, there we go. Sorry, folks. So in both scenarios, we might be looking at a reasonable position. Now this covered call here was roughly 12 to 13% in the money when it was open, still looking for a good 4% return at around 16% downside protection. The standard caller at the money had a risk of 4.4%, but it's still a max return of 4.7%. But the at the money sort of out of the money caller has what? It has a lower potential return of being assigned. You have a high potential, reasonably good potential for profit to the upside. But when this position was open, the stock was at 166. And we sold a slightly out of the money 172 and a half call. So we need the movement to go up to get that max return of 4.7%. However, buying almost the same distance below put option, in this case, it was for 910. Uh, so we were able to sell the 172 and a half call for 1060, stock at 166. And buying today's expiration, 157 and a half put for 910. So we what would we need? We need the stock to move up in order to get that max return of 4.7%. The stock falls, of course, to 157.50, about six or seven points at the time. I'm sorry, about nine points at the time from 166. Well, the most we can lose is 4.4%. It's controlled risk, but that's not very far, is it? You know, it's just about six or seven percent, uh, five or six percent down if the stock falls to where you're at maximum loss on the position. But it gives you that great controlled risk. You still have a reasonable return. We just have a lower probability of getting that max return because we need the stock to move up in price. A deep in the money covered call, same time, February 1st, roughly, buying the stock at 166.26 and selling the 145 call. There's about 13 percent in the money. The premium of 26.78 gave about a 16, 16.5% downside protection. But remember, that only covers you to the break even price in a covered call. In this case, the break even was 139.48. And as you can see, Roku, I use this example. It took a big tumble today, a little bit over 34%, I believe, or around 33% at one point. But it's down to 112. Okay, so we were expecting a 4% return here. It's an extreme example, but this just illustrates the benefits of a caller and the benefits of an in the money covered call. We hedge the loss down in this case, the stock's down uh, $5,380 or 32.4%. We've cut that by more than half or just around half to 2,700 with that deep in the money covered call for the premium of 2,678. Again, I know Roku is an extreme example that I took from today to illustrate this version of Tony's question. But again, it's um, in the money covered calls do give you a good downside protection. Don't get me wrong. You can still see a reasonable return on the position. But yes, for a monthly, I still want to make sure that's around two or three percent on some lower volatile stocks. Tony, naturally, I won't be able to go as far in the money. If we took something like IBM, I might have only been able to go two strikes in the money, even for a monthly to see a reasonable return of two percent. That might only be giving me a seven percent downside protection. The collar gives you the better protection, of course, where you can't lose more than that amount. But as you saw, it's just if the stock fell to 157.50, then we would be at full loss on the collar. We could rebracket the collar, of course. You could readjust it and continue to manage the trade, of course. But again, it's all small move to hit the full loss in the position, and you need a movement upwards to get the max return as well. 
Whereas in the Roku position, you saw we were deep in the money, that break even was around 139. Unfortunately, the stock fell to 112, but you wouldn't start to see a loss until it hit to 139 on the position. So that's sort of the uh, discussion there on the, um, I apologize, deep in the money, covered call positions, pros and cons. What is the pro deep in the money covered call? You still get that very high, very strong downside protection. Bought the stock at 166, gave us a break even of 139.48 there. Yeah, this was well below it, but that's still about a 16% downside protection with the potential to still make a reasonable return going in the money, but you still want to make sure you don't go too deep in the money where that's all wiped out, for example. And of course, at the same time, you have a higher probability. You're starting off in the money, so you have a higher... And you've got to be kidding me. Okay. you got to have a higher probability in that case of seeing the return. Okay? That's what the in the money covered call. The collar, there it is, sorry. The collar position started off with a reasonable return as well, but a lower probability of getting that max return. The stock needed to move up before you get assigned on that position. You've capped your risk to 4.4% in that case. You can't lose more than 4.4% on the position. Um, and as I mentioned here, the hedge was kept in place with this unexpected move from Roku down 33%, whereas on the covered call, in this case, we're still losing about 19%. Not losing 33%, <laughs> but we still are losing it in that case. Um, so that's what's to consider there, Tony, in those situations with the deep in the money covered call versus the standard collar. And again, because of the proper collar structure I wanted, that almost one-to-one -one risk reward ratio of only risking 4.4% for the potential to make 4.7% return, it only could fall from 166 down to 157, about nine points before you're at maximum loss. Again, that in the money covered call had the downside protection uh, all the way down to 139.48 before you started losing money on the position. Um, so a comment comes in, says, so you're suggesting that the deep in the money covered call is better. Well, <laughs> I'm not exactly saying that. Uh, I'm saying it's very successful. It's a very popular strategy. Ernie's monthly and weekly picks of the day are slightly in the money to give that better downside protection while still having the higher probability of getting that return we talked about, 1%, 2% return uh, in those scenarios. Um, sometimes higher, yeah, 3%, 2.8% uh, for next week's expiration. But the, these are more volatile positions a little bit. You can see that Rivian, Hymex Technologies, Digital Turbine. That doesn't mean they're bad positions at all. And you do have a good downside protection, 8.7%, 9%, 8.6%. The key to remember is that in uncertain and unexpected markets, or what happened to Roku today, what was the other one? There's another big one that tumbled about 23% that I recognize today as well. Different stock, though. Uh, Redfin, I think it was, 23%, if that sounds right. You're only protected by the amount of the downside protection. Anything beyond that, you could still see a loss. Whereas with the collar position, you know up front that you have that controlled risk in place. Even if there's an unexpected collapse, an uncertain market, something unexpected happens, you can't lose more than four, five, six percent on the position guaranteed with a lower probability of getting assigned. I like the collar position personally. I do. It's it's. Um, <clears throat> I use married puts and I use standard collars in the larger portion of my portfolio for controlled risk while still getting income on those positions. Um, I don't mind in the money covered calls either. Don't get me wrong. If I'm not interested in a stock and I like the premium, it's a good way to go. I just have to analyze why is that premium so high? Why is the implied volatility so high in that scenario? What's going on? If I see something that looks too good to be true, I need to understand why that is there because it might be a situation like Roku today or Redfin. Um, oh, Redfin's off now. Okay. I thought RFN was in here earlier in the stock losers. DKNG, DraftKings. Okay. They took a reasonable percentage drop today as well, uh, 22%. Um, so yeah, if I had bought this, let's say at 22 and sold the in the money 20 call and got an extra dollar for the premium, let's say I got $3 for it. Well, I'm only protected to 19. I'm still losing $1.71 on this position with a deep in the money covered call. However, with a collar, we bought 
uh, DraftKings at 22 ish, somewhere around there. He probably would have sold the 22, 2250 call, maybe bought the 20 put, only be risking four or five percent on the position. But again, it's uh, <laughs> not all stocks do that. And I just wanted to show the extreme example in that scenario uh, for you there, uh, related to the collars versus an in the money covered call. So you could see that you're only protected to that point, you can still suffer big losses in extreme situations with the covered call position, the in the money covered call it being more conservative even, whereas the collar doesn't have to move as much, it only had to move nine or 10 points before it full loss on the position, but we controlled the drop to only 4.4% on the trade as well.